In this video, I'm going to show you five excellent use cases for Mediator's pipeline behavior. If you know what middleware is for an HTTP request, then a pipeline behavior is the same thing for a Mediator request. And if you don't know how pipeline behaviors work, don't worry, I'm going to show you everything you need to know. Mediator is an in-process messaging library with PubSub support. It allows you to create a request object and the respective handler, and when you publish a Mediator request, it's going to route the request to the respective handler and give you back the result. The pipeline behavior abstraction extends this behavior by allowing you to wrap the execution of a request handler. It only contains one method called handle, it's an async method and it gives you access to the generic request object. The second argument is the request handler delegate, which you are going to invoke and this will execute the next request handler in the chain. And you also get a cancellation token which is implicitly captured inside of the request handler delegate. You can look at pipeline behaviors in the same way as middleware for your HTTP requests, except pipeline behaviors allow you to wrap your strongly typed request object instead of a generic HTTP request, which doesn't contain so much information, or at least it's not so easily available. So let me show you what you can do using pipeline behaviors. I'm going to start with the request logging pipeline behavior. This pipeline behavior implements logging before and after executing a mediator request. You can see we're implementing the pipeline behavior interface and we're specifying the T-request and T-response generic arguments. Another thing you can do with your pipeline behavior implementations is specify some generic constraints and this will determine if the pipeline behavior should execute for a specific request, but it also gives you a way to access some additional information for example, on the response object, because I added a generic constraint that the T-response has to be a result implementation. Inside of the handle method for my logging pipeline behavior, I'm capturing the current request name, adding an information log, and then executing the request handler delegate. This is going to give me back a T-response object, which I said is a result using the generic constraint. This allows me to access the properties of my result object. I'm interested if this is a success result, and in this case, I'm going to add another information log. Otherwise, if it's not a success result, it means it's a failure result because this is a binary state, and I'm going to add an error log, which is also going to contain the result error object. Here I'm using the error log log context to push this property so that I don't pollute my log message when I'm logging the error here. And finally, I'm just going to return this result from my pipeline behavior instance, and this is going to complete the logging pipeline behavior. Now, the beauty of this is that I can chain multiple pipeline behaviors one after another. So after the logging pipeline behavior, I may want to have an exception handling pipeline behavior. The implementation is very similar. It's going to be a class with a generic T request and T response, and it's going to implement my I pipeline behavior interface. In the handle method, all I care about is just executing the request handler delegate, catching any unhandled exception, and then logging that using an I logger that I injected in my constructor. Notice that I'm using the primary constructors feature for classes, which was added in .NET 8. I like using this because it simplifies my classes. I don't need to specify fields for my services and the constructor injecting the field values. I can just have a primary constructor and I can use my logger in this example to just call the method that I need. There are some caveats with this approach, mainly that the logger is treated as a parameter and it's mutable, but I don't really care about this because I'm never going to change the logger's value. And this is why I like using the primary constructors feature for dependency injection. Now back to the exception handling pipeline behavior, it's only there to log any unhandled exceptions. I'm going to rethrow the exception after logging it, but this would also be a good opportunity to replace the generic exception with some application specific exception if you want to and if you already know the types of exceptions that you would be expecting in your application layer this is also a good place to handle the specific exceptions so this is our second use case for a pipeline behavior the next use case would be validation which is why I have a validation pipeline behavior you'll see the same generic implementation as before and this time I'm injecting a collection of I validator instances for this specific request. This is actually coming from a library called Fluent Validation, which I like to use together with Mediator to implement my validation pipeline behavior. The handle method is a bit more involved 
but basically what's happening here is I'm going to pass the request to the validate async method. And what this method is going to do is just run any of the validators on this specific request instance. This is going to give me back a list of validation results. And then I'm going to extract the validation failures from these results and return this to my handle method. If we go back to the top of the handle method, we're going to store the validation failures into a local variable. And if there aren't any failures, we're just going to execute the request handler delegate and return back the result. However, if there are validation failures, we are going to stop the execution here, which means that we can also short circuit the mediator request pipeline to return something else. And in this case, I'm doing some checks. If the return type is a regular result object, or a generic result object, and I'm constructing a respective result instance, which I'm going to return from my pipeline behavior. If all of the above fails, I'm going to throw an exception because I wasn't able to create a result object that I could return from my pipeline behavior. So we've solved three cross-cutting concerns so far, request logging, exception handling, and validation, and I actually wrote a really nice article about cross-cutting concerns inside of the clean architecture, and you can read it from the pinned comment under this video. Now back to the contents of the video, the next cross-cutting concern that I want to solve is caching. And for this, I have a query caching pipeline behavior. This implementation is very interesting because I'm using generic constraints to only execute this for an implementation of the iCached query interface. If I head over to this interface for a moment, you will see that it exposes two properties, the cache key and the expiration time. And we're going to use both of these values to implement our pipeline behavior. The cached query interface itself is used to define an iCached query request object, which implements the iQuery interface that we use to define our application queries. And this is actually a mediator request under the hood. Now back to the pipeline behavior, we're also injecting the cache service abstraction and the logger to log cache hits and misses. Inside of the handle method, what we're going to do is implement the cache aside pattern, which means that we're first going to try to fetch the value from the cache using the cache key. And because my request object is an iCached query, I can access the cache key property. If the cache result that I get back is not null, then I have a cache hit. I'm going to log this and return the result from my pipeline behavior. Otherwise, I have a cache miss. And in that case, I'm going to execute the request handler delegate, which is just going to call the respective handler for the particular request that I'm handling. And if I get back a success result, I'm going to store that value inside of a cache before returning it from the pipeline behavior. The next time this request is executed with the specific cache key, the value should be in the cache unless it has already expired, which is specified using the expiration property. What I find very powerful with mediator's pipeline behavior is exactly the possibility to limit the execution of the pipeline behavior based on a generic constraint. In this case, my query caching pipeline behavior is only going to execute for my application queries. If I send a command for the pipeline, this pipeline behavior is going to be skipped completely, which is also a performance benefit because I'm not doing additional work to handle my requests. And I want to show you one more pipeline behavior, and this is a transactional pipeline behavior. Something like this could be practical for executing your commands and making sure they always run inside of a database transaction. Of course, this assumes you're using a relational database under the hood, and you can create a database transaction. In this case, I am, which is why I'm implementing the transactional pipeline behavior like this. For the dependencies, the important thing is the unit of work, which I'm going to use to call the begin transaction method. This will give me back an IDB transaction instance, and then I can execute my request handler delegate inside of the transaction. Finally, I can commit the transaction and return the response. And because I'm creating this transaction inside of a using statement, it's going to be disposed when the handle method completes. If the transaction is not explicitly committed and it gets disposed, the entire transaction is going to get rolled back. So you don't have to manually roll back the transaction in case of an exception. If you really want to, you could do that, but it's not necessary. One more improvement we could make to the transactional pipeline behavior is to scope it for only application commands. In this case, the tRequest generic argument 
is only specifying that this should be a class, which means that this is going to execute for our application queries. And queries don't need to run inside of a transaction in 99% of use cases. So how you could do this is by defining a transactional command interface. I'm going to head over my I command interface, and I'm going to define a new interface definition here, which I'm going to call an I transactional command. It's going to implement the base I command interface, and I can also implement a generic implementation of this interface. So let's add a T response generic argument, and it's going to implement the I command of T response, which is an interface that I already have. However, it's also going to implement the I transactional command interface. Defining it like this allows me to target both my command and the generic command implementation using the I transactional command interface. So if I go back to my transactional pipeline behavior, I can replace my generic request with this one, saying that the request object should be an implementation of the I transactional command. And this gives me the ability to decide which commands I want to run inside of an explicit transaction, which also means I can decide to handle some commands outside of an ambient transaction, which makes this approach very flexible. Typically, I'm going to define my pipeline behaviors inside of the application layer in the clean architecture, and you can see that all of my pipeline behaviors live in the same folder. Another reason for this is that I like to depend on abstractions in my pipeline behaviors instead of the external concerns which are referenced in the implementations. But you could decide to place your pipeline behaviors in infrastructure and just register them with Mediator. It would function the same at runtime. And I also want to touch on the execution order of your pipeline behaviors. You can control this by registering your pipeline behaviors in a specific order. They're going to execute in the way that they were registered with Mediator. And you do this by calling the add open behavior method and specifying your pipeline behavior type. And you can see that I'm first executing the global exception handling pipeline behavior. Then I have my request logging pipeline behavior. Then I'm running validation. And finally, I'm running the transactional or the query caching pipeline behavior at the end of my request pipeline. The order of execution here is definitely important and it's something that you should pay attention to. If you want to see how I set up CQRS with Mediator, then you should watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.